You are watching a CUDA worksheet tutorial on similar right triangles. I am Mr. West. This is a geometry. Now, similar right triangles are all about comparing different right triangles uh, in a triangle with a drawn altitude. What do I mean by that? Well, we have a big triangle here, a big right triangle. We have a medium-sized triangle, and we have a small triangle. Okay, so these are the three triangles that we have available to us, and we're gonna compare them uh, based on certain measurements. Now, we don't always need to compare all three. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that real quick. We don't always need to compare all three, but we can compare, compare those that have a common length. Okay, so ones that uh, has a length shared. So if we're looking at this particular one, we can see that our desired measurement is this altitude okay right here this altitude now these these are really good problems because it really makes you think what measurements you need okay so if we're looking for x we need to pick triangles that have those as a shared side so clearly the big hold on let me change the color here so clearly the big triangle does not share that side if we're looking at the big triangle the big right triangle Notice how the big right triangle does not have that as a side, okay? So we, we're not gonna use the big triangle to compare here. But we do notice that the small triangle and the medium triangle both share that side, okay? That altitude, okay? So we're actually gonna make a comparison between the big triangle, or sorry, the medium triangle and the small triangle, okay? So what we can do here is we're gonna put um, a couple different ways we can do this. We can compare the medium triangle on the left, and then we'll put the small triangle on the right. Now, let's take a look. We need to label certain sides. So as we label certain sides, we'll notice here that we have given for the small triangle, we have this as the short side. And then we have this as the long side, okay? Now there's, so besides just as an overarching uh, kind of game plan, we have big triangle, we have medium triangle, and we have small triangle, okay, that we can compare. And then for the sides, we can compare the uh, long side, we can compare the short side, or we can compare the hypotenuse. So those are the three things on both categories that we can compare. Notice here, we don't really care about the hypotenuse of this short triangle, okay? We don't really, or yeah, of the small triangle, we don't care about the hypotenuse because it's not given and we don't need to find it. So we can kind of ignore it. But for the short triangle, we are gonna compare, let me put this here, we're gonna compare it the short side to the long side, okay? The short side, I don't know why I put it there, there, short side to the long side. So what's the short side of the small triangle? The short side, is 36 and the long side we're going to call x now we have to make light comparisons so if we compare the short versus the long side with a small triangle we have to do the same thing with the medium triangle so let's identify those features so the short side for the medium triangle is x see here here's our medium triangle boom 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 this is the short side clearly just based off appearances okay so the short side is that one now, this is the long side. This is the hypotenuse. We don't care about the hypotenuse. It's not given. It doesn't have a measurement. This long side, we do need to know. Okay, so that's our long side. But how do we find that measurement? Well, we have to do some subtraction to find that measurement. We're going to have to do 100 minus 36. So we find this long side by doing 100 minus 36, and we get that it's equal to 64. Okay, so even though it wasn't technically given in quotation marks, Technically, it was available to us because we could find the measurement by just doing some simple subtraction. So we do x over the long side, 64. Now we are ready for solving for x. How do I know I'm ready? Because we have a geometric mean. A geometric mean uh, means, I hate to say means twice, but it means when we have the same thing in the numerator on one side as the denominator on the other side. Sometimes it's gonna be the variable, sometimes it's gonna be a number, but this is a way we know we're setting up these right triangle similarity problems up correctly when we get a geometric mean. 
So we're going to go ahead and solve. How we solve is we cross multiply. So we get x times x on the left, or it doesn't matter, on the right. Then we get 64 times 36. So luckily I got a calculator handy. Hopefully you do too. And I get 2,304 on the right, and I get x squared on the left. How do I solve for x? I square root both sides, and I get x equals the square root of 2304. Whoops. Give me a moment. And I get 48. So now I know that x is equal to 48. All right. Now, just as a pro tip as you approach these problems, if you are given hypotenuses, if you are looking for a hypot, am I spelling this right? No. Hypotenuse. If you're looking for a hypotenuse, you're going to use the big triangle to compare, either to the uh, medium or to the small. You're going to be using the big triangle. If you are looking for the altitude, you are always going to be comparing the medium to the small. Oops, I got that backwards, didn't I? Purple is medium. The small to the medium triangle, okay? That's just kind of like a pro tip, so you save yourself some time trying to figure out which ones to do, okay? But that's uh, that's just kind of overall game plan. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how that works out uh, as we do some more of these problems. Okay, number two, what are we looking for? We're always gonna highlight our X, and we see that we are looking for X, okay? This is a couple things. One, it overlaps with the big triangle, so guess what? We're probably going to be using the big triangle because this is a side for the big triangle. It also overlaps with the small triangle. Okay. Notice how for the small triangle, there's our 90 degree angle. Notice for how the small triangle, this is our hypotenuse for the small triangle. Okay. Hypotenuse, that means we're going to be using the big triangle. That's just how it works. Here we have this 25 is the hypotenuse for the big triangle. Okay, so we definitely know we're going to be using the big triangle in our comparison, and we're also going to be using the small triangle in our, compar uh, in our comparison. So we're going to put big triangle on the left. We'll put our small triangle on the right. Okay, now what are we going to compare? Well, I already said that we're going to compare our hypotenuse. Okay, so here's our hypotenuse for the big triangle. Okay, hypotenuse. What's this side then for the big triangle? For the big triangle, let me highlight that in blue again. For the big triangle, this bottom side represents the short side, okay? So we're gonna compare uh, the hypotenuse to the short side, okay? So for our next one, oh, we need to write in what they are. So we have 25 over our short side, which is X, okay? So hypotenuse was 25 for the big triangle, 25. Short side was X, bottom side X, okay, and there we go. We're going to set this equal to our small triangle. So I'm going to erase this, pause it if you want, okay. I got... Will I erase it? No, I kind of want to overlap it. So I'm going to overlap it just so you see, okay. Here's my small triangle that I'm drawing here. Small triangle, small triangle, small triangle, okay. Notice here I am given this little measurement here, this 9, okay, and this X. For our small triangle, this X represents... Get rid of that. Yeah, I, I kind of got rid of it. But that's okay. This X represents our hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. We already talked about that. And this 9 represents our short side. Remember here, uh, we're going to be comparison, comparison, comparing our hypotenuse to our short side. Now, if you want to do short to hypotenuse, that's fine. You could put X over 25 as long as you put it consistent on both sides. So our hypotenuse here is X for our small triangle. Let me change it to green. X for our small triangle, and then we have our uh, hypotenuse. No, no, no. X was our hypotenuse, and our short side was 9. Okay, so we recognize that we have a geometric mean. Here's our geometric mean. We have X on the numerator for one side and X in the denominator for the other. So we have the geometric mean. So we're going to cross multiply here. We get 9 times 25. We get 225 on the left, 9 times 25, and then we get x squared on the right. We're going to take the square root of 225, and I believe that's 15, double check, yep. So we get 15 equals x, and that's how we do these problems. Most of these problems, you're going to be taking the square root of these. Okay, let's hop down. Let's see if we can find a tougher one to do. Um, let's take a look at this one, number five. Okay, here we see we have uh, a small triangle here. 
okay? And a medium triangle. Why did I highlight these two as opposed to the big triangle? Well, the big triangle, we only have one measurement, okay? We'd only have the hypotenuse, okay? Whereas for both the small triangle, okay, here's our small triangle. For the small triangle, we have two measurements. We have this X and we have the seven. For the medium triangle, we have this nine and we have this X. You can only compare triangles if you have two sides given. And that's been the case with all these. I haven't mentioned this yet, but we have two sides given and that's how we can make these comparisons. So we have two measurements for the small triangle, two measurements for the medium triangle. We don't have two measurements for the big triangle. Take a look at the big triangle. We'd have our hypotenuse, which is 16, but that's it. We only have uh, one measurement. So that's not enough information to make a comparison, but we're good to go because all we need is two triangles. We have our, ah, dang it, that's a small triangle. I always do this. We have our small triangle that we can compare and we can put it on the left, it doesn't matter. Small triangle and we're gonna compare it to our medium triangle. Okay, so we have our medium triangle. Now, let's compare. What are you going to compare? Well, we have the short side and long side for all of these, okay? Anytime you're going to be comparing the medium and small triangle, you're always going to be comparing short to long side. You're never going to be comparing the hypotenuse. That is always reserved for when you're using the big triangle. It's just how it works out, okay? Because the big triangle or the small and medium don't share a, hyp a, a hypotenuse as a side. Therefore, you can't use it. So the short triangle or small triangle, we have the short side and we're going to call that, it looks like seven, and we're going to call the long side X. Okay, so our short side for the medium triangle, medium triangle, short side, we have X, okay, the short side, short side, long side, okay, I'm just clarifying. Now, I drew this wrong, but that's the long side and that's the short side. Okay, so we have X over nine. So now we're ready to go. We have a geometric mean. Here's our geometric mean, numerator for one side, denominator for the other. And we cross multiply, we get x squared on one side and we get 63 on the other. We take the square root, we have x equals the square root of 63 and that's our answer, okay? If you guys get it right now, that's fine. I would just end the video right here, you're good to go. But I'm gonna do a couple more just so you can get it. Here's some tougher ones that we have. Uh, I think number 14 would be a good one to go over. So here we have, we need to find two measurements here. So we have for our big triangle, okay, notice for our big triangle, we only have one measurement. We have the hypotenuse is X and that's it, okay? So that's not good. We can't use the big triangle. For our small triangle, Okay, it looks like we only have one measurement, but technically we could find this missing side here. We have information to use to find it, even though it doesn't look like we have two sides. We can use it because we can find information, and clearly for a medium triangle, we have enough information to begin our comparison. Okay, so let's start with the medium triangle. Medium triangle, and let's compare our short to the long side. We can do long to short too if we want. Doesn't matter as long as you're consistent on both sides. So our short side for the medium triangle is clearly 48 and the long side is clearly 64. We're gonna set this equal to and we're gonna com be comparing our small triangle on the right. Okay, so our small triangle. We know that we have the long side. Okay, the long side is gonna be, here's our short side. This is our long side. Our long side is gonna be 48. You're always going to be having, most of the time, you're going to be having the altitude, okay, be your geometric mean. So the altitude is x here. The altitude will most often be, here's your altitude, your geometric mean. So this case, our geometric mean is not composed of a variable. It's composed of a number. So we have 48 here and 48 there. So we have our geometric mean. We just need to find our short side and put it there. Well, what is our short side? Our short side, well, we can take x is that whole distance there. We can subtract 64 and we're gonna be left with our short side. Just so you can see that, okay? X is our whole side right there. We don't want that whole side. We don't want this part of it. That part is 64. So if we take X minus 64, that will give us this side right here, just our short side. So we make this X minus 64. Now we're ready to cross multiply and solve. So we're gonna cross multiply here. On one side we get 48 
times 48. On the other side, we get 64 times quantity x minus 64. Very important that we distribute and recognize that we have to distribute here. So we get 64x oof, minus what's 64 squared times 64. 4,096 equal to 48 times 48. 48 times 48. And we get 2304. 2304. Okay, we're going to add 496 to both sides, 4096 to both sides. And we get 6400 equals 64x. Now we're going to divide by 64 to both sides. Cross that out, cross that out. We get 100 equals x, and there's our answer. So we know x equals 100, and that's how we get that answer. So hopefully you guys have enough information on these types of problems to be able to do all of them. If you need me to do more, I can do more. These are tough, these are challenging, but they're very worthwhile and really test the limits of your knowledge on proportions. This is Mr. West. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time on West Explains Best.